My name is Dr. Ramsey Rosa. And for the last decade, I've spent my life dedicated to a single cause, helping others fight the diseases that plague humanity. But not anymore. And it's all because of them. You see, there are many cancers in this world, and they all wear different faces. Some are doctors, like me. Some of them seek out the truth, regardless of the consequences. Others mock the very science they worship. We just ran out of time. Why is it every time I come to visit, there's always a crisis? Are we under attack? The scientifically impossible probably will happen. I don't need to understand them. Just tell me what I can do. Hey everybody, it's Charlie. They dropped a brand new promo for The Flash Season 6 Episode 1, and there's a whole bunch of DC stuff that just happened the last week. Tyler Hecklin is talking about the supposed Superman spinoff TV show that's been in development for forever. We have more Joker movie footage coming up, a Birds of Prey trailer, and I had a chance to see Titans Season 2 Episode 1, so I'll add a little non-spoilery review for that at the end of this video, with no spoilers, just because everybody will have to wait a couple days to actually watch it. We'll do a new round of the giveaway for the DC streaming service. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your best crisis on infinite earth theory on the video. First big thing too, if you guys didn't notice, they brought back the chin strap. They dropped this preview and everyone's like, oh my God, welcome back chin strap. We missed you so much. I cannot remember a video that I posted last year where there weren't people complaining about the lack of a chin strap. The costume itself is slowly moving in a more comic book direction, so they're getting there, but the way they film the show and the special effects all in combination with the way Grant Gustin moves through physical space just wound up looking kind of awkward without the chin strap. Like it didn't look better than previous versions of the costume. And then when Stephen Amell wore the costume, it wasn't quite as flattering as it could have been because he's like a really huge dude, but the costume did not do him any favors. So everyone rejoice, the chin strap is back, and that's also part of the Crisis newspaper because this whole time in the Crisis newspaper going back to season one, he's always had a chin strap, so people are just wondering when we're going to see that version of the costume. So here it is, the official Flash Crisis on Infinite Earths costume. First things first, new Flash footage, the Flash showrunner talking about their three different story arcs and the different villains they're going to have this season. The big changes is that the first half of the season right before Crisis is going to be the blood work villain that's mostly featured in this episode one trailer. Ramsey Rosa is a comic book character. If you haven't read The Flash Rebirth, he's right out of that, but he's a relatively minor character who was working inside the CCPD with Barry Allen during the negative Flash arc. So he had a special personal history with Barry Allen, but on the TV show, that'll be with Caitlin because he's a scientist, she's a scientist, so they'll have previously worked together. His main metahuman ability is controlling blood, literally controlling blood. He can create constructs, he can control the blood in other people, he can control the Flash's blood even though it's laced with speed force energy. The showrunner said that his storyline is building up to Crisis on Infinite Earth even though all the episodes, the first half of the season on The Flash, Arrow, the other DC TV shows will set up Crisis in different ways. Grant Gustin said that they start teasing Crisis right away in the first episode. The Monitor shows up and gives him the business that he gave to Oliver at the end of last season. They didn't say how long they're going to wait before they actually physically reveal the Anti-Monitor, but this is what he looks like. He's basically a dark version of the Monitor, which makes more sense than them going with a more literal adaptation from the comics, just because he looks so crazy. But I don't know how much they're going to get into the idea of who he used to be before he became the Anti-Monitor. They have way more story to play with than you would during a normal two hour movie. So just expect more backstory into what's going on with the Anti-Monitor. His fight with Barry directly sets up what happens at the beginning of the crossover, but that also is because of Harrison Wells. So there's a new version of Harrison Wells coming, but Tom Cavanaugh is also playing another pariah character from the comics who in the name of simplicity and logic will probably just look like an alternate version of Harrison Wells from a different Earth in the multiverse. Anytime Tom Cavanaugh pops up multiple times in an episode, it's usually just different versions of Harrison Wells. The pariah character will wind up serving the anti-monitor and be the person that tips off the crossover. I've talked a little about this in previous videos. The pariah character in the comics is a totally different person, but he's the person responsible for alerting the anti-monitor to the existence of the positive matter multiverse. 
his scientific experiments doomed them all and then he winds up being cursed to serve the anti-monitor and serve as a warning trying to run around the multiverse telling everyone he's coming to destroy everything you're all gonna die the way they talked about him they also made it sound like pariah is different from the reverse flash the eobard thawne reverse flash who is also coming back for crisis on infinite earth so technically that's three different characters that tom cavanaugh is playing all the stuff the first couple of episodes, pretty standard, setting up the brand new characters, the new version of Harrison Wells on the team, and they did say that this new Harrison Wells storyline will be very specific to how Crisis on Infinite Earths go down. So if you're looking for actual teasers for Crisis on Infinite Earths, just watch his character and what he does during episodes, because he and his pariah counterpart are more important than ever in beginning the actual crossover episodes. Most of what's going on with Barry at the beginning of the season is just leftover grief from Nora at the end of last season because they say not a whole lot of time has gone by when episode one picks up. So they're still reeling from watching her die, seemingly die, because remember what happens when speedsters die, their body turns into pure energy going back into the speed force. So because of the timeline edits, a new version of Nora will eventually come along I imagine at some point some of that will get teased during Crisis on Infinite Earths and then they'll pay it off by the end of season six. But I don't expect Nora to come right back on the show right after they kill her off. But a new version of her will come along eventually and the showrunner also did say that a lot of what's going on the first half of the season will be callbacks to the stuff that they did during the Elseworlds crossover. So he's like, you better watch the Elseworlds crossover episodes again if you want to know what's going on. I think when he's talking about that, he's talking about all the monitor scenes where he's setting up the larger crisis to play, the bargain that he makes with Oliver, that kind of stuff. I've already talked about a lot of the other big characters they're bringing on, probably one of the biggest being Kevin Conroy's older Batman from the Batman Beyond continuity and Batman the Animated Series. I am vengeance. I am the night. I am Batman! Bringing that into canon with the Arrowverse like they try to slowly bring in the Smallville stuff. Tom Welling and Michael Rosenbaum were at a panel recently talking about the Smallville version of Batman that they tried to do way back in the day. People of course asked them about appearing during the crossover and they claim that no one has contacted them with an offer about crossing over but I think that's them just messing with the fans because Tom Welling has been messing with people about being in the crossover for most of the year since it was announced. The other big thing that's happening during the crossover this year is that they're setting up another spin-off TV show that the CW is developing for the Arrowverse. They didn't say what it was going to be. There are a couple of big options. The way they talk about it, they make it sound like it's not going to be a direct spin-off of Arrow with those future Team Arrow characters like Mia and her team around her. People have been asking Tyler Hecklin this whole time because they spent so much time developing his character, his baby John Kent, with his Lois Lane in last year's crossover. It seemed sort of like a backdoor pilot if he was going to do his own spin-off Superman TV show. What he said was is that he feels like a show with just him would be kind of boring. But I think winking behind the camera, the whole idea was is that they spent so much time developing the idea that he was having a baby with Lois Lane and they were going to get married, that the show might be more about him raising that young boy, John Kent, with Lois Lane. Because that's something that they've never done on the TV shows before. Like they've done Superman TV shows in the past. We're almost on the 10 year anniversary of Smallville. That was him in high school and then his very first years. So when they do new shows with characters that they've already done, they try to do it in a way that they've never done before. And Superman family with Superboy is something that has never been done on TV. It's probably going to be next spring before we actually find out what the new show is going to be. So let me know in the comments, which new TV show do you want the DC TV people to do? And because I had a chance to see Titan Season 2 Episode 1, here's my quick non-spoilery review. I'll do a bigger Easter egg video this weekend. The first chunk of the episode drags completely as they try to take the show in a new direction and you can physically feel when all the new Season 2 stuff starts picking up. It feels like a real Teen Titans TV show, a thousand times better than what they were doing during Season 1. But what happened is, is that they had a finale last year that they shot and then canceled, didn't air it, then chopped it up and turned it into part of their episode one to wrap up their Trigon arc. So all the stuff that doesn't work in episode one is that leftover Trigon stuff from the end of last season. Then if you've seen the Titan season two trailer, the second part of the episode is where they sort of split the group up and set up the brand new characters. And that's where it feels a thousand times better. The dialogue, the character interactions, the actual characters that they're bringing on during season two, all so much better than what they were doing with season one. 
So if you didn't watch Titan season one because you didn't like what they were doing, you can just sweep that under the rug and start fresh with season two, episode one. Brand new episodes start airing tomorrow. There's 13 episodes, I believe, in season two. So however you can, find a way to watch the show and just leave all your video requests as we go along week to week. I've got new Birds of Prey and new Joker movie videos coming up, so I'll name a giveaway winner when I post those. Everybody click here to watch that new Birds of Prey trailer and click here for my non-spoilery Joker movie review. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.